A comparative study of the representation of women by male and female artists. Does gender equity exist in the art world? Our comparison of male and female artists will show the objectification of women by male artists. It was awfully common for female figures to be depicted as beautiful, delicate creatures in the romantic style. An artist that succeeded in achieving this portrayal of women was John Everett Millay in his painting Ophelia. Here, the male artist chose to highlight the emotional weakness of the subject and her inability to overcome her internal issues, therefore resulting in suicide. On the other hand, Cameron, a female photographer, established her photographs in order to add dreamlike qualities to her real-life women. By minimizing the depth of field and including some blur in the final image, Cameron's Ophelia is doused with mystery and confidence, traits included by the photographer in order to cast a comparatively positive light upon her female characters. Through the use of light and bright colors, Degas achieves the romanticization of a world that profits from the objectification of women, little monkey girls as he would call them, as shown in the flowing dresses controlled by a man in the top corner, just as the red in his shirt attracts the attention of the viewer. Female artist Gertrude Casimir, in contrast, focuses on the spiritual and maternal attributes of women in her photograph, Blessed Art Thou Among Women. The mother dressed in a pure white evokes a sense of prophetic guidance resembling a guardian angel, while the child is portrayed with careful innocence and importance. Another prominent objectifier of women is Pablo Picasso. In his painting, The Young Ladies of Avignon, he depicts women as prostitutes in brothel. The five schematized naked females reveal the sense of promiscuity. The focus is on women's bodies. Their faces do not express anything and look very alike. Females are illustrated as objects for men's sexual satisfaction and nothing more. By contrast, Kathy Colwitz focuses on the emotional aspect of women in her works. Her painting, Woman with a Dead Child, reveals the maternal grief, the woman's deepest sorrow of holding a dead body of her child. It shows women as loving, sensitive, and dedicated people, and touches topic only women can relate to. Roy Lichtenstein's Hopeless suggests both in title and subject a male point of view of women as melodramatic. His artwork utilizes a genre that is notorious for objectifying women. His comic book heroine is portrayed as a victim drowning and unable to cope with her dejection, rather than being empowered. Cindy Sherman's work comments on how the images of women are socially constructed by men. In her untitled film still number 35, she shows us female roles as perceived through the male gaze. By choosing to play the character of housewife at home waiting by the door in an apron, she shows how constructed these roles are, especially because at the time, women were a major part of the paid workforce fighting for equal pay. In Jenny Savile's Branded, we see a nude self-portrait, a bloated female form, enormous sagging breasts, stretched flesh carved with words such as delicate, support, and decorative. We're either fascinated or repulsed by this unusually grotesque figurative painting, groundbreaking in its depiction of a less than perfect female form. Jeff Koon's Pink Panther sculpture depicts a woman's perfect form, complete with perky breasts and long blonde tresses. A green cloth is draped coyly around her waist, revealing her naked back and buttocks. She is fetishized, commercialized, and exposed. Regardless of intention, the message is glaring. The female form, reality versus fantasy. Gender equality. Does it exist? You decide.